All right. Hey, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Sue, and I'm from OML Embroidery. And today we have a new setup. Beatrice and I moved everything around, and I have a little bit more room now, so it's good now. Everyone can hear me? Hi, Leah. Uh, Janet says, good morning from South Carolina. Well, good morning. Chris Yost, good morning. Ramona, good morning. Reno, Nevada, hot place over there. Robin, hi, Robin. Waves, waves. Uh, just shared this link with my quilt guild. Thank you, Judy Quilt. Hopefully, Mr. Quilt is doing well. All of our wishes to him. Nana, hi, Sue. Chris Yost, hi, Sue. She's saying hi back. So, uh, yeah, Lynn, good morning, neighbor. Good morning, Lynn. Wait till you see what I did in the in my office. You're going to love it. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, I just needed a change, and now I have a perfect change. It's awesome. However, um, I'm not done yet, and I misplaced a few things. I misplaced the ruby chicken. So when I play chicken, it's my good luck charm. And... I don't have any pokey things, so I'll have to be careful. They're here, but somewhere. Okay, so Mr. Quilt starts low-dose chemo pills for his anemia on Monday, getting steroids lowered. That's all good news, I think. Awesome. Awesome. Did I see... Viv oh, Vivian. Hello. Isabel. Aaron. Uh, Karina. Hi, Karina. Awesome. Cindy King. I didn't see her name. Hi, Cindy King. Congratulations for the millionth time. I loved your videos that you put up too. That was awesome. Um, wonderful. Wonderful. So today we are going to be making this one. And it's really cute. Um, I really like it. It's folded fabric and the rest is applique. Bold colors. Well, mine is going to be bold colors. And we're going to do learn, do what we did last week. And what we learned last week is how to make a fabric fold envelope. Envelope like this on the back. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. And it's going to be easy. So make sure you hop over to omlembroidery.com and pick up your mug rug because there's a couple of little tricks in this one. So I want to show you my colors. It's it's bold. So look at that. That's going to be the flower. So I'll put it here. The flowers orange. The uh, pot. I'm still going to do red. I better move up a little bit. And if you can believe this, I'm going to do pink Lynn. Sorry, that slipped out. Pink Lynn. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. Now, how's that for some tropical colors? What do you think? Um, wow. <laughs> Mug rug needs a ladybug on it. Yeah, that would be awful cute too, wouldn't it? Adorable. Good idea. And I don't have my thread stuff uh, rack set up. So I just have a few colors because I really like to pick colors on the go. Um, as soon as I finish up here, I'll have it here. And these trays are awesome. Did you guys see on Dime that they did a little thing about me using these? I was so excited. So excited. Yeah, because it's awesome. Uh, so I'm just keeping them straight here. I don't know. This one looks really good for matching. They all do, actually. But look at that. Perfect. The yellow is in here. Can you guys see that? Let me see. You can see it. Look how yellow that is. So I'm going to do that. And the orange is right in here. And then I thought maybe I could try purple somewhere. I'm not really sure how it's going to look. But yeah, it's. I think it's going to be really fun. Now, I just realized I am missing a piece I need. So hold on, moving away from the microphone. I need, and I put it all away, what I need. All right, I got it covered. No worries. 
thank you for having the right stuff. There we go. What I didn't have was the background of the flower. So now I do. I just picked like a blue. I think it'll look good. And you know what else I don't have? Eh, I was so worried about my setup. I don't have any... Um, Oh man, I can't believe me. Batting. Oh well, I'm a bit off if you can't tell, maybe. Uh, I'm just checking my drawers and there's nothing. So everyone, hold on. Just off on a roll today, so I'm just gonna hack myself out a piece of this. I think I should always keep batting at my desk in case I do this again. <laughs> so five by seven hoop for this one. And, uh, you know, make sure you have all the pieces that you need. And we're going to get started in just a minute as soon as I sort this out. So yes, you guys can laugh. Ha ha ha. That was fast. Yeah, everything's like everywhere. So that's why it was fast. I knew where this one piece was that I could cut out. Uh, I moved literally everything in this room. So it's been a lot of work. I hurt myself too. Apparently, um, Captain Jack is too heavy for me. <laughs> Joys of getting old. <laughs> Uh, Carol says we would get a, a bit discombobulated from time to time. I just uh, was worried about the cameras and I just put up the final lighting and the whole bit. So that's why. Anyways, apologies, but it's all figured out. Let's go to Captain Jack. And yes, I can still see the conversation and it looks good i have a little bit of a different view and i have a better close-up view look at that isn't that nice isn't that nice love it so we'll go we'll go wide now you have to in pes you have to turn you have to turn it because it's not going to fit. So, which is like a normal sewing room. I, no, not quite because I've got piles of stuff and plugins that don't have matches to plug them in yet. I'll get there. I, and plus I'm moving stuff downstairs. So that'll be nice. So that's a pretty good view. I kind of like it. Yeah. Happy rainy Saturday. Oh, bobbin police. That's the other thing I haven't found yet is my bobbin police patch. But bobbin police, I have a new bobbin in it. So we're going to be good to go. Whoops. Now I'm going to lose pieces. Look what I'm finding attached to me. Uh, raining. I think when I got up this morning, I think there was a little bit of rain for the dogs. Um, so... I don't know if we're supposed to get more. We probably will. Yeah. So. Look, you can see the eyeball peeking out. Can you see that? Just right there. Peek. All right. Stitch it down. <laughs> you always got to have fun, right? Got to have fun. This is our Saturday morning. Hopefully there's a lot of people watching. I need to get my views up so I can keep doing this. And um, I'm working on shadow boxes. I've got, one was a picture that Chris Yost sent me and I'm pretty happy with that. And the other one is Niagara Falls and I'm just having a little bit of a hard time making it look like I want. Um, maybe I will put a picture of it in the group and you guys could maybe throw some ideas at me if I can't get it. Okay, so now we're gonna start with all the applique. So the first applique is going to be right here. So what's the first step for applique? Placement, 
placement. Isabel says, please take a minute to like the video. Yes. I'd appreciate that every little bit that you guys um, do like that really helps. And we're going to have to kick it up a notch so I can stay doing this. So the thing to remember here is that we need a seam allowance. So if you look here, let's see if I can get it. Yeah, you can see it actually really well. This is what happens. I was close. I was over the line. But look, that's that's when it's not cool to play uh, applique chicken. See, these ones I used proper pieces, but this I was trying to... Uh, use the five square but look even though it's stitched there it's still popping out so that's the reason why you want to leave a seam allowance because otherwise you have stuff popping out and I don't think we want that so I picked blue just because there's no blue in it but I wanted uh, a central point Judy Quilt says applique chicken is always a bad idea for me. I just wanted the colors that I used, so I was kind of being bad. But, you know, what are you going to do? So that's awesome. I like that blue. That's very nice. I think that I've had that for at least half a million years. Just so everybody knows, half a million years. Waiting for the dance, do the dance, there we go. And we're gonna go back to the desk and I'm gonna do a little trimmy trim, but this is where you have to be careful. So this is a seam, this is a seam, and this is a seam. So we wanna get rid of the inside part because we are going to do some overlapping appliques on it so this is what you want to do here get rid of it and you don't have to be too careful on this one because we are um is that a charm square uh no i think this was like uh you're talking about the blue uh it was like six by six or something you know that's that's it charm square on this yes I tried to do a charm square here and here, and I knew it wouldn't work, but I did it anyway. So what does that make me, a bad embroiderer? Nah, nah. I just maybe should have thought it through. It's what happens when you get tired and you embroider, right? <laughs> what are you gonna do? All right, next is applique. Uh, and I wanted to do applique because I want a satin stitch down here. That's the only reason. And I'm gonna start with that gorgeous pink. So because it's an applique, we can just lay it down, which is nice. Is that pink gorgeous? It's a very busy um, layer cake, basically. All right, doesn't matter what color you're stitching with, it's all good. Do you guys wanna look closer? We can look closer. There we go. Hey, that's a pretty darn good view. I might leave it like that. I'm gonna hope the camera's not in my way when I uh, change thread, because it's in a whole different position, and I really like it. So hopefully it's gonna work. Okay, so this, we have to do a little trimming, and this one's different than the first one. So we're gonna go back to the desk. And here we are, yes. And we'll take our nom noms, nom nom nom. Somebody usually says something, <laughs> There we go. So, seam allowance, seam allowance. Not a seam allowance, not a seam allowance. Because it's not on the last edges. So cut, ooh, look at that, oh, never mind. It was a good until I noticed the beginning, so. Yeah, never mind. Now we're going to do folded fabric next, which I thoroughly enjoy and I love how it looks. So let's go back. Uh, I think I'll go back directly into the close up. 
Then you can really see the Bob and Bob and police and you know I'm telling the truth. So now for the folded fabric. So you should be saying in your head, uh, what is the first step? So what is the first step? It's placement. So that way you can check to make sure your fabric is going to fit when you do the fold over. And sometimes it doesn't and you have to get another piece. So, and this is why you have to cut it. See how that folded on this side? I'm over here. See how that folded? If you had it any longer, it would have folded right back over and you'd have to do some cutting. So we don't want to do that. I can pull the camera out a little bit uh, so you can see it. Now, this is how we want it to end. So what we're going to do is fold it this way and this way. We have more than enough. Might be a tad short here, but it should be okay. I feel confident. So that's our line. And we want to, yeah, it is going to be short. Uh, there we go. That's fine. We want to place it in the opposite direction that you want to flip it. And if you get confused, because sometimes some of them can, just do what I did. Just a little practice run to make sure you got the placement that you want. So next step, Judy Quilt's all excited about sew and flip. I know it is. It's cool. The next step is a red. I always do the folded fabrics in red. It's a red line and it just stitches it down. And then you, oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Finger press it. If you have one of those um, mats that fit into your hoops, you will have stunning results. I like uh, when it kind of sticks to the batting, which mine is doing, and I did that perfectly. That is, that is loud fabric, but it is gorgeous. So yes, that's awesome. That is beautiful. So we need to do a quick trim and then we can come back for the last flip and fold, but we still have two more appliques to go. so little bit little bit of work on this one but it's so worth it i love it and yes i love this fabric i love it so many colors on it so this where's my other piece here we go this one takes more pink isn't that pretty i'm gonna do it like this isn't that pretty that is gonna be really nice so I'm going to go close up again so we can see. And this is our last flip. And this is our last fold. Ha, how's that, right? First step, placement. There we go. Christy says, good morning. I was excited to see this. Well, I'm glad you're here. Jenny Owens likes the choice of fabric. Got to go back to work. Aw, she'll be part of the replay crew, though. I'm glad you could stop in for sure. Thank you. I like colors in now. Can I do it? Coffee? No, nah, I can't remember. Just not always the print. I bought some and I look at it and I'm really seriously not sure yet about it. I'm not sure at all, but I bought some. I have some because everyone seems to love it. So uh, that's our line and fabric is going to be folded that way so we want to put the bulk of it this way so we can fold it that way and I can see that this one is gonna have enough room and have enough um, seam allowance you gotta make sure of that when you're on the edge living on the edge Julie Stefanhagen hello hello Everyone's awesome. So there we go. Super cool. Ready for the flip, Judy Quilt? Flip. 
Now, I was slightly off right here. Can you see that? But I know we're going to put some fancy stitches on it afterwards. So I'm just going to fold it down and stitch it down. It's a quick fix. Don't put your fingers so close. So just a little fold so we don't see any edges. And look, fixed. I was just a tiny, tiny bit off. Now this isn't as flat as I normally like it, but it's okay, you know? So, quick fix, that'll all flatten down when we do the rest of it. So now we're gonna do our flower pot. So, everyone uh, catching up or caught up or um, any questions? Um, it's awesome. Replay, I love Replay Crew. They always put Replay as a comment, and that is just so excellent. I love it. Every comment, every like that you do makes a difference to YouTube, and I need to get YouTube serving up, in a way, my uh, videos a bit more because they're going down. They have been for months. Isn't that a cute pot? Now, if you had terracotta... Um, that would be awesome. Beth, you made it. Yay. Glad you could join us. Let's go back to the desk. Beth and everyone else who just came in, I have a new setup. And so far, I really like it. I think the colors are really nice and clear. And I think it looks great. So yeah, if you had terracotta, I think... That would look great for the pot and then some matching thread. So there's a lot of different appliques on this, but they're not, they're not difficult appliques. Oh, Jill. Hi, Jill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to see you or kind of see you. You know what I mean? So that's where we're at so far. But thank you. I appreciate the support. That's for sure. Things are still a bit rocky over here, but uh, getting better, getting better. I found some people that I can ride with that apparently are really nice, so I'm kind of excited about that. That just gets me out of the house, so awesome. So now we are going to do the finishing stitches for the pot, just because it's there. Usually I do all of the embroidery but if you notice or applique first but if you notice i started with the pot color so you don't have to change it so there's another trick um this is the first the first finishing stitches and that's the color i loaded first and it just saves you you know changing threads i'm happy to do that Yes, we are glad that you are back, Jill. It's wonderful. Isabel, thank you so much. Isabel, the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Isabel. Cool. My screen says 123 watching and 79 likes. Yeah, I have 123. I can't see how many likes, though, because it's covered up on my screen. But yeah, thanks for your support. I want to keep doing this. I have so much more to teach you guys and so much more, so many more um, shadow boxes. Judy Quilt, all right, thank you. Oh, there's a nice picture of uh, Judy Quilt and Mr. Quilt. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you, Sue, for your continuing these great YouTubes. I just shared this on my Facebook, and now Sue's expertise and educational fun on OML is so helpful and great. Thank you very much, Grandma Bird. I appreciate that. If everybody did that, I'd be flying. And this is why I do the videos, because there's so many people out there that um, don't know how to do things properly and they just kind of wing it and they get frustrated and they don't like embroidery and I'm here to tell you that we can have fun doing embroidery and we can make mistakes and not get upset about it because we can fix them uh, <coughs> Barbara Nance says hope this helps 
I've been watching or tuning in for videos for replays to boost views every other day. Absolutely that helps. 100% for sure. The more views, the better. Joyce! Yay! Thank you, Joyce! Oh, I love that little dancing thing. What is it? A pear? A monster? <laughs> yeah, the colors are good. I could have maybe picked something different for the blue, but I kind of wanted it to be toned down a little bit. So, you know, so it stands out. But I like the red. I like the red. It's cool. Well said, Grandma Bird, says Jill. Yes, thank you. I appreciate that. Will you have any more videos using the PEP software? Uh, yes. Yes, I should get back to doing that. So, I think... Now, what color do I want? Orange, yellow. I think orange. We're back far? Yeah. All right, let's see how I do for changing the thread. Um... Yes, saved to my favorite, shared to my favorite quilting group. Awesome, thank you. Even to Pinterest or anything like that helps. Anything, I always share it to my Pinterest. I have old mail embroidery ones, so. Okay, go around. I'm struggling and I gotta get used to different movements around the camera because it is out of my way, which is fantastic it's not right in front of my view and I'm really happy about that so now we're gonna do the background leaves which is awesome and I decided on yellow you can click out of live chat click the thumbs up and come back yep I just shared to my Facebook page also all right you guys are rocking it today awesome so uh, with the digitizing videos, I use the PEP software. I love it. It's very user friendly. It's also got a lot of stuff that, you know, if you can't create something out of nothing, they have shapes, they have little things, and you can make your own sort of thing, and I like it. However, you can apply anything, anything on PEP to your software. And what that does is that it makes you think just a little bit harder. So when I say running stitch and it's there, you have to look for it for yours and you're gonna remember it better. Ellen Stratton, thank you very much. You guys rock. Karina says, glad you hear you found a crew to ride with. Yes, I am thankful for that. And apparently they're really nice people and uh, they won't let anyone bother me. So. I like that. I like that. Uh, I needed a new battery and all the old changed and everything. And uh, Sam helped me out with that because she is a wonderful child. It was, you know, a lot of money. And I had Harley pick it up and they fixed it. And then I went and picked it up and wrote it back. And I was so happy. It was awesome. But yes, thank you for all your support. And I mean, if you can't donate or you can't buy the designs, because that's part of, you know, supporting, uh, you can always, you know, like, like, share. That helps just as much. So yeah, there's always something you can do. Judy Quilt says, you have two fabulous daughters, Sue. I do. Thank you very much. They have been amazing through these trying times. Um, I couldn't have done it without Beatrice. She helped so much. And I couldn't have done it without Sam, too. So, yeah. I was a good mom. And now they're good kids helping me. There we go. Do comments help out as well? Yes. They do, absolutely. Even if you put a smiley face, see, the more attention you guys pay to the video, the more attention YouTube does, if that makes sense. And then they, YouTube will start serving it out. And some, for some reason, they don't do it. And that's how you get more views. And more views, I get more advertising money. So it's it's easy i mean easy stuff doesn't have to cost anything the whole idea was all this for free and youtube pay but 
the commercials got a little bit much, so I only do a little bit of them. So that was the outline. Now I'm going to keep my yellow on because I want this bright. And here I'm going to put my star, my flower, in this orange that actually really matches that orange. But yes, anything you can do help. I uh, love it. Yeah, Sue doesn't have the camera in her way anymore. It makes a big difference. I have Captain Jack on a bigger table, and the way I have it, I'm pretty sure the shake is down, so it's not shaking at all. Um, nice and bright, I'm right under a light, and I put up my other light, and I'm super happy with it. I also have more room um, on the hoop mat, too. It's nice. All right, look at that orange and the yellow. I think I'm going to leave the yellow. I think I'm going to leave it. I really like it. So last applique, let's go back to the desk. And we're going to cut it out. Cut it out with our nom noms. Susan Williams is finally home. Yay. Close and color is very nice. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad I spent a lot of time yesterday and making sure it was good. And I was really happy because it's so much nicer. Can you imagine doing all this embroidery with a uh, camera right in front of the needle? Yeah, no. Ha. Looks great. All right. Do you have a sewing mat under your machine? It helps with the vibration. I did before, but for some reason, uh, Captain Jack didn't like it. He was, I guess, a little bit uneven. You have to level your machines. And the sewing mat, kind of where the pressure points are, it got lower. So I took it off and he worked better, so... I'll just leave it. I got a nice big solid table so there's no shake. There's no nothing like that. So, there we go. Look at that. Look at the orange and the yellow. So, when you do colors like that, it brings out, there's only a little bit, but it brings out a lot more of it. So you can see it. You, your eye kind of goes to it. I could actually do a pink color around the outside and I think that'll look really good. So pink like this to bring it all together or I could do purple. It's not quite the right color. Hmm. Let's do this weird pink color because I think it's matching well enough. I was going to do yellow, but I'm changing my mind. Pink, 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 says Lynn. <laughs> yeah. It's all about, you know, what you see first. So that is the reason for the lighter color background, even though it's blue. Um, but it makes the flower stand out. If we had, you know, this even on the back, you're going to get lost in the patterns, right? So I'm just changing the thread while I'm talking. So yeah, don't be afraid to, to mix the colors like what I'm doing. You guys will be surprised. It doesn't always work, but you know what? It's worth a try. So I'm just bringing in colors from, from the fabric and I think it's gonna be great. So let's see how this is gonna look. We can go back to the machine now. And I'm pretty sure the pink is going to be exactly what I want. So, whew, let's see. It's so exciting. It should be, whoops. There, how about the machine? I didn't hit it right, sorry. <laughs> that's just the sky behind the plant. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's why I did it. Is there a link for this mug rug? There is a link in the description. Always a link in the description. And I usually put one and pin it at the top, but I forgot. <laughs> Leah says, Sue really does have a knack for picking colors that go well together. Even crazy patterns can go well together. That's, that's one thing I was trying to show today is 
it's loud in the right places, if that makes sense. I like it. My daughter came to visit and rearranged and organized my she shed. Ooh, lucky you. Now all I'll have to do is find the new locations of my stuff. <laughs> yes. And one, also one right in chat from Grill, Judy Quilt. Thank you, Judy. Judy Quilt's awesome. Judy Quilt's awesome. So, yes, let's see. Yes, Judy Quilt put it up. Put the link up. All right, what are you guys thinking of the pink? Because that makes it look almost like electric. I love it. There is another line. And I might, I don't know what color to do. Purple maybe? Or the red? Ooh, maybe the red. I'm just looking, is there enough red? Yeah, there's enough red. Or yellow. Okay, yellow, I'm doing yellow. Ah, <laughs> there we go. You're all awesome, each and every one of us who love OML and Sue. Yeah, we make quite the crew. Hey, you guys, next Thursday, so the Saturday, yeah, Thursday coming up, I am going to do Dime Between Friends. I get to be on the show again. I'm so excited. Is Lynn says, is there a difference between the three ways to do backings on the mug rug? The one way is the satin stitches, and that's not applicable here because that's a little harder to set up. The Sioux crew! <laughs> Welcome to Sioux-ville. <laughs> that's awesome. So the satin stitches one is one way, and you really can't convert it. The other one way is... Um, like one piece of fabric on the top and then you turn it and this envelope way is easier it takes a little bit more fabric so if I have the fabric I could do the envelope one if I'm a little short on fabric I do it the other way so yeah Davina says love it here yay yay the backing on the mug rugs is, yeah, the envelope one, yes. And now, this design is not set up for an envelope, but we're going to do the little trick that we learned last week. So if you really like the envelope, you can do it on any mug rug. Super easy. I'm going to show you how again. Uh, check out that video, though. I go over it step by step, and it looks really good. It's, this is my Saturday morning cup of tea. I am usually really relaxed when, uh, you know, it's just about go time. I get everything uh, done the night before. I, I was a little off today, but, you know. I'm working next Thursday and will miss Dime, but we'll for sure catch you on the replay. Excited to see you with Dime. Yeah. You know, I will tell you, Eileen Roche is one of the kindest people uh, I've met in a long time. She is absolutely wonderful and caring and understanding. She was great because she had asked me to go on last month and the month before. And I was kind of a mess, so I said, I can't, and I told her the basics of why and she gave me some wonderful advice and every week she checks in to see how I'm doing if I'm okay and she said are you ready and I'm like yes my haircut I look different I'm me again so yeah so can you choose which way on the mug rugs for the backing yes you can so this, this is gorgeous right here. Let me zoom in. This line, so I did it in yellow, which is close to kind of what this fabric is, the second fabric. This will look good. Uh, yes, you can, Lynn. Now this one is set up for the, uh, you know, folding it, but we're going to show you this. Years ago, I took a weekend class with Eileen and her sister. Both ladies are awesome and personable. 
that's what I find. And, I, you know, it's the thought that counts, and I really appreciated it. I've never met her, but we chat for a few minutes beforehand, and she just, she just thinks the OML group gang is funny, because everyone's like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Kind of like the wild children of embroidery, and I get a kick out of it. I do. So can you guys really see that yellow? Because I'm telling you, it's awesome. Especially since I did the yellow behind. So I am gonna do a yellow center because that brings more yellow into it. Now yellow isn't a huge color on it. It's more the pink. And I do think this pink matches almost perfectly. I just purchased the shadow box bundle. Yes! The horse, the turtley owl, and the clamshell fruit salad. Oh my god! And the flower pot mug rug. You are a wonderful artist. Thank you. Thank you for your support, Margie. And I make great designs. So you will have a ton of fun stitching them out. They're all good. I, I do make mistakes. I'm not perfect but uh, they're well done and the instructions are good and hopefully I've done a video on it but if you have any questions on any of the designs uh, head on over to OML Embroidery University we are the best group out there and everybody helps and it's nice okay so now we're gonna do the covering stitches here and I'm gonna stick with my yellow so there we go that's easy easy thanks for giving me the idea to use neon thread for this project i was going to i tell you i was going to but the pink neon didn't really look good with the pink here so i'm like you know no Ooh, the yellow is gonna brighten it up i'm so excited yes i'm an embroidery nerd i get excited about colors what are you gonna do <laughs> Your camera skills are wonderful. You don't need assistance. You go, girl. Thank you. It's actually much easier um, doing it um, myself. So, Variegated for the flower center. Variegated would be beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That's awesome. Or the blended Floriani. Yep. Yeah. Either one. Great ideas, guys. Uh... Leah says, just shared on my timeline and never shared a video before. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Um, Jennifer says, Sue's great at being ever so helpful. I try. I try. I want everyone to have as much fun as I am doing embroidery. I know I got my friend who lives down the street from me, Lynn, into it and she didn't think she'd ever do embroidery and now it's her it's her go-to like stress relief she does embroidery and she feels happy because i you know just be cool are you doing the moose shadow box no the moose no oh no karina karina time out i I'm not going to tell you guys that. Paula says your fabrics are pretty. Love the mug rug. Thank you. Now we're going to do a little bit of decoration. And I'm going to stick with this yellow. Um, the fabrics, I, I, they're loud. But they are loud for the right, in the right spot. Now you could have maybe used something a bit louder on there's my nails by the way it's hard to see them um on the flower but i still think it would take away from it so yay would you do a highland cow shadow box yeah if you have a non-copyright picture of it um send it to me please uh that saves me time and i can get get to it faster yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure on my nails. I was just playing around. They're very uh, sparkly, and I like that. But, yeah. Pattern fabric for the flower. Absolutely. 
And for the fabric over here, you could use one solid, like in the middle. Easy peasy. So look how great that yellow looks. I love it. It's just the right amount. I love it. A Highland cow would be great. Yeah, if you have them and you could take a picture with a nice background, that would be the best way. Jill says, your nails are wonderful. Love the colors. They actually kind of match what I'm doing because it is, uh, well, light pink doesn't go, but it's white, purple, and a very hot pink. So, yeah. Okay, so now we are on our last step. So if you wanted to do it the way I have it designed, you could put a piece of fabric and you put it face down and you will stitch all the way around it and leave an opening. And then uh, you're done, trim it and turn it. But we want to do an envelope backing. So if you guys remember, this is how we're going to do it. We need to fast forward. We need to go, go, shall I say, to the very first step. And the very first step is the square that we need. So it's actually really easy to do this. Now I'm going to pull this back so I can see. So then I'm going to place my back fabric down now. It's bigger piece of fabric and it is folded in half and you want to make sure that you put the folds in the center and do make sure you have a seam allowance. I'm just always checking so and it could be straight too like this and then the other piece which is quite red is going to go like this again with the um fold in the middle and you want at least half an inch of a crossover like you see it's got to be a little bit you can't put them you know butt them up together if you do it like this it's not going to look great so you want an overlap for sure and that's pretty much all you have to do uh it works best if you iron i hopefully won't get caught up you can use a little bit of tape if you want but now we're stitching the first step which is absolutely cool so it's that easy to do on anything on any mug rug that is that has you know one or the other different way so i'm worried about here but Watch your fingers. Nope. Nope. I should have taped it. All right. So now we have a little problem, but it's not huge. It's just little. Everything got stuck in. So we just have to be a little careful. Thankfully, it is on the last step. So that's what happens if it gets all caught up, right? So the idea is try to be really, really careful. Did my needle break? No, my needle's good. It's just kind of shoved down in there a little bit. So we want to carefully clip the stitches. There, see one, two, there you go. So it was stitches holding it back. Anyways, don't fret about something like that uh, for sure. It's easy to fix if it's not too bad. And we're, we're going to move it back just a little bit out of my way. So that will still be okay, but, but my... Oh, it's right in front of me. Oh, good for me. I don't have to search for it. I am going to put a piece of masking tape and you can sew through the masking tape. It doesn't make any difference. And then it won't happen again. And I can be very confident that it won't happen again. So, so if that happens to you, eh, don't worry about it. Just fix it. Just fix it. So 
Oh, it would help. I forgot to thread it again. So, how about we do that again and then I'll back it up again. So, yeah, if you make a boo-boo like that, it's not the end of the world. Even if you damaged the fabric, it's outside the seam line. So it's really not going to matter on this one. So I kind of lucked out if I'm going to make a mistake, uh, that's where to do it. So, see that? There we go. And now we'll be finished. And we'll cut it. And we've got an envelope backing. And I'm pretty happy with that. I was almost to the end, too. Isn't that great? I don't think it's stitched. No, it didn't form any stitches. So what I'm going to do... I, I think he's probably just a little bit mad at me for doing that. I don't see any yellow stitches, so I'm going to put the thread in. The thread, the bobbin. Yeah. No worries. No worries. This is all part of the fun, right? super de do. I don't like this bobbin thread. I like the uh, dime bobbin thread better. This one seems kind of lo loose. I caught it. I caught it. There is a thread in there. Oh, how nasty. I got it and I got it. So just a redo of everything will help a lot. You guys still with me? Because look, there's no stitches. The stitches didn't form. Now I'm threaded properly. The machine usually tells me, but I checked. And what I'm going to do is go back again and figure it out. I'm going to watch it very closely. It probably just wasn't picking up the bobbin thread. So. There we go. Problem fixed. So that's what you do if you have that problem. <laughs> Most of all, Sue's taught me not to panic when something goes wrong. Yeah, don't panic. There's no need to panic. Just think about it. And look, I came up with uh, a good solution. It wasn't a big deal. It just wasn't forming the stitches. All right, let us go back to the desk and we're almost done thanks for hanging with me on my last minute uh, boo boos it happens everybody's gonna do it the important thing is not to panic or get if you get frustrated i always say you know what just walk away walk away see how easily that tape comes off super easy and even though it's sewed through it and you can see there's a little bit of damage here, uh, but it's in the seam allowance, so it's not going to show at all. So now I'm going to take my pinking shears, which are a little weird to use, but I found they've worked. They work great for turning stuff, and you don't have to be perfect about it. You don't even even have to be good. It's there. And just, oh, they're kind of heavy duty things. <sighs> Glad my machine is too heavy to pick up and throw out the window at times. Yes, I agree for sure. Captain Jack, well, I hurt myself lifting them, so I got Beatrice to do it for me. Yeah. Just like, Mom, B, I can do it. No. All right. So, pinking shears are my favorite for this step. Yeah, me too. I've had them for years and I never used them because I just thought, geez, they're cumbersome. They're hard to use like they're um, heavy duty, I guess. And I never used them and I have discovered it is way better. So we did our nice envelope. I think that's great. And now we're going to turn it. So I just pick up one side and then the other 
And I love how it turns out. I love it. There we go. Ah. Boo-boos are like Yogi Bear. We need to get that picnic basket. <laughs> Boo-boo. Yes. Yes. You can fix it. You just have to think about what happened. What happened? Now, I don't really know exactly precisely why stitches didn't form, but I know stitches have to do with the bobbin, and that's why I went after the bobbin. And it worked. Start with the easy stuff. There we go. <laughs> Susan Williams, I've tried, I've wanted to do that also. Uh, good thing there's an air conditioner in the window. Yes, don't throw your machines. They're, they're not not gonna like that so look at that look at compared to this one same mug rug but completely different look it's amazing I'm pretty sure i like this one better the pinks and the bright colors i'll zoom in i'll zoom in i almost went back to the machine the pinks and the bright colors look at that so I like this one. So one and two. Which one do you guys like? One or two? One, two. I mean, the yellow is really nice. I like both of them. Okay, thank you. Top one better. Yes. Yes. Don't don't count the applique chicken at the bottom. <laughs> one, one, one. Yes. Um, I like the pink, but the yellow is nice too. Yeah, I think so. I think so too. So don't be afraid to use bright colored fabrics in the right place. If you want an envelope, that's what it looks like at the back. If you want an envelope closure, that's how to do it. It's super easy. Um, it's, it's nice. Look at the colors. Pull colors from your fabric, not all of them, but look at how, when you look at this, how it makes the yellows and red stand out. That pink is gorgeous too. I will give this to Lynn because it's very pink for sure. Ha. Um, so yeah, go to omlembroidery.com and uh, pick it up. I keep everything priced low because it is, I mean, obviously I can't live without money, but it's more so you can learn and have fun and make great designs and so you know what a good design is so you don't keep stitching the crappy ones um that's the whole point of it so there we go so thanks everyone for watching i'm glad you guys like my new setup i'm very happy with it i've look at how bright those colors are i'm very happy with it thanks for all your support you guys i really appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Happy stitching.